Welcome to Regions! And today, spawning in the north corner of the map in blue, we've got El Sensei, also known as Vortex, playing as the French. And his opponent in the south corner of the map in green, we've got Lash, playing as the Ottomans. Welcome, welcome everyone to this Age of Empires forecasted game on the game mode Empire Wars on the map Regions. And well, this is an interesting one. The French do start off with more villagers. They start off with 26 villagers versus the 23 from the Ottomans. Of course, compensating for the kind of missed Dark Age in many ways for the uh, Empire Wars game mode. And of course, the French do have a faster working town center, so they should really have more villagers at this stage of the game. So things are kind of fast forwarded in Empire Wars. And we, as we say that, look at this. Twin Minaret Madrasa, the feud laser will be coming in very quickly for the Ottomans. Something interesting is that actually uh, Vortex has popped out to go for the Deer Pack. Is actually going to be looking to potentially get uh, survival techniques, a really strong upgrade if you're going for Deer Packs. And uh, well, that's what he's doing at the moment. We'll see if he checks in and actually goes for that or not. In any case, he's going to go for the School of Cavalry landmark to get the French Royal Knights nice and early. He's going to wheelbarrow it as well. So early eco upgrades going to be pumping out that economy. And there it is. There's that survival technique. It's going to be increasing the gather speed of hunted meat by 15%. And I think generally it's an interesting civilization matchup. Uh, well, okay, this is a decision point already. A talking point. Already one and a half minutes into the game. It's going to be a second town center for the French. And... I think this is a really key decision point. And the reason why I'll say that is because, well, let's talk about the map first. That's what really the context is about. The map regions, as the name suggests. The resources are in regions, of course. You've got the gold in the middle. And on the east, you've got a region of lots of berries. And on the west, you've got a region of lots of deer. So generally, you can see a lot of the resources are in the middle of the map. You've even got stone as well, outcroppings. And the reason why that's crucial is because, of course... Um, you need to get the map control. Like, if you run out of gold, it's a really big problem. You only actually have one main gold vein in your base to start off with. Falash is very far forward. It's a kind of terrible positioning there. Uh, but it only has 4,000 gold. So bear that in mind. It's not like a massive 8,000 gold uh, outcropping or gold vein. Something to consider because, of course, if you're going to town centers as Vortex is doing, especially with the French, with their faster rate of villager production, they're going to be putting a lot of food into maintaining those TCs running. And whilst that economy will come online and really boost up the forces if it's spent well later on in the game, like sort of maybe the 15, 20 minute mark, perhaps, the trouble is that it give up a lot of map positioning in the early game and it gives the Ottomans a bit of an opportunity to build up a force uh, to be reckoned with and get control of that middle of the map. But that is, of course, if the Ottomans only stay with one town centre. It does have two military scores pumping out those three units. It does have four villages on stone, so I'm not sure if that's for more um, military scores or for a second town centre. I mean... The thing about the Ottomans, if they do go for a town centre to try and match the French, it's a tricky one because they never really can match the villager production if they remain on the same number of town centres. Again, because of the French, you know, producing villagers faster. Well, it's going to go for that second town centre on the board. Really nice approach because, yeah, as we did say, you know, it will have to put a lot of food into maintaining this town centre production, but... Certainly one way to compensate is by getting the boar because it's a very fast source of food gathering. And so it will hurt the French a little bit less because, you know, the thing about going for two town centres, you're always worried about your military production, how much you can maintain it and how many units you can get out on the field. But if you get the food coming in fast, it, it doesn't hurt as much, right? So the good thing about second town centre, obviously putting on boar like this, uh, whilst obviously, you know, have to pump out villagers and cost a lot of food, well, you secure a lot of food from this huntable boar. It's something that the Ottomans can't obviously take advantage of themselves. Uh, following the Islamic tradition, not able to take that kind of meat. And uh, we see a lot of spearmen trying to protect that gold vein. It's going to be key and critical because, of course, if Lash wants to get to that castle edge at some point, he's going to need gold. And it's something that Vortex might look to pressure, but the fact that he's gone for a second town centre means that pressure doesn't come in particularly early. And it does give a, an opportunity for Lash to get enough gold for that castle edge, potentially. Because he's got a decent number of forces on the field, but I have to say, you know, the French Royal Knight, an incredibly strong unit for the, uh, the French civilization. And can dish out a lot of damage. It's got the chase going on. It's going to lose that charge soon, I think. The charge only lasts for a couple of seconds. And yeah, the charge does now go away. So, interesting dynamic. In many ways, the Ottomans are considered the counter-civilization to the French. And it's because of the, the military prowess that they have in the feudal age. And obviously, the French are very strong in the feudal age themselves. Here comes the Sepahi diving in on that one knight. Takes a bit of damage. The Sepahi do have a bit of an increased attack range. And... Here comes a fight with the archers, the knight archer combination for the French. Very typical. It's going to be Sapahe Spearman for Lash at the moment. Now, the thing is, for Lash, he needs to just build up a critical army just so he can take a really decisive fight. He needs to be careful about these villagers on gold, though. 
Leaving them unprotected is always risky against these French royal knights. And we'll see what ends up happening here. Because the second town centre for French, uh, one thing to consider um, is castle age timing. And with the French being on board, it, it doesn't actually hurt the castle age timing all that much usually. Uh, because of that fast source of food. So it, it's a really nice approach because two town centres means that you've got a better economy. So it really comes online sort of minute 15, minute 20, where you can kind of escalate the economy into military production. But... The Ottomans are a different civilization. They get the military scores, free units, and if they pump everything with one town center play, there comes like a really nice timing attack for the Ottomans where they could do a lot of critical, critical damage. And if they can do that and get map control, it gives them an opportunity to win the game. If they can starve the French out of gold, it's a really, really nice state of play. The question is whether they will, whether they will be able to do that or not, whether Vortex will take really good cost-effective trades and fights in the meantime. Oh, we do see some supply here. They broke. They didn't even have to break through. It was open on the east side. Didn't get the walls up in time. And this is a situation here because we've got two fights happening. We've got Knights diving on the gold lane. That's going to be a decent fight for Vortex, I think. But take a look at this on the wood line. This is absolutely bad for Vortex. He hasn't noticed. A lot of villagers will go down and take a look. He's actually used the fortitude ability, I think, on the supply here. And that's absolutely critical because that increases the attack speed by 50%. You can see absolutely chewing through those villagers. Six villagers go down. Seven. Make that seven. And now Vortex... Hasn't got a single villager kill on his own. Now, he does lose all that army here back at home, Lash. Did have his army split up into two, but these villagers do escape. And he does have wheelbarrow, so this is great play by Lash. He doesn't lose a single villager, and he caused so much havoc with these Sepahi, with the meta, and also the fortitude ability. He might even use it again underneath the town center. There's only one melee unit, and that's Knight. Now, the, this is such a great, great ability. The fortitude ability gains 50% attack speed. But it does mean that the uh, Sipahi do increase the damage received from melee units. But there's just not even that many melee units. So he picks up another couple of villagers, 10 in total. He might need to ride out now and save as much as he can. The, the meta still survives. And that has a great raiding attack there for Lash. He's got to be careful. He did lose a single villager himself. But uh, yeah, he's got to be careful. He's got to protect that gold vein now. Come home. He's done the job he needs to do. And that second town center for... Vortex, it's not looking that amazing right now because, of course, how much damage he just took on that wood line. It's a great play by the, uh, by Lash, and, and if he can just double down and just sort of uh, build on from here, it could really hold him in good pressure in the mid game. Because the thing is, is that those 10 villagers, that's a lot. Like, that's a lot of resources. That's like a lot more units that could have been pumped out for the French. And we'll see if that's a decisive amount of units to have lost. Uh, eco units to have lost as the game progresses. Look at the numbers now for Sabahi. Looking good, for sure. But Vortex is keeping up the military production. And he should be going to that castle age pretty soon. Just a little bit more gold needed. But the same could be said for Lash. So not too great in terms of the villager difference, but Lash has done a lot of damage. Villagers need to back off here. Oh, he does lose a couple there, Lash. Is the Sabahi going to chase? The archers... Going to try and focus down on as many of the spim as they possibly can. The spim would love to get close and personal to those knights. Knights are riding away. The the uh, the Sepahi are not using the fortitude ability now because of the knight numbers, right? You don't want to really engage with the knights with that fortitude ability. You'll take 50% more damage from those and that wouldn't be good. He doesn't have that many spim in here though, Lash. He might still be able to win this fight though. He's got decent numbers for sure. A couple more hits, a couple more stabs. He's trying to focus on the archers, I think. And if the spearmen get in there, that would be really good for the Ottomans. But yeah, Vortex has to back off now. He did go up with the Guild Hall, which is an interesting choice. We see that a lot in uh, Empire Wars, and I, I think it's an interesting one. Like, I don't... On this matchup, I'm not sure I'm a big fan. I, th I think it helps in some ways for this map because of the fact that if you're off of gold, right? At least the gold, Guild Hall gives you some access to gold. But I think generally where he's going to be under a lot of pressure from the Ottomans, I, I just feel like whether maybe the Royal Institute could have been a better pick. Like, you can get some really strong upgrades, Royal Bloodlines... Um, cantled saddles as well and it just makes the knights obviously a lot more stronger but having said that though if you don't have gold then you don't have knights and I think we're getting to this point of the game where things are critical I think there are two issues to think about there's the the relics now that the both players are getting into the uh, castle age uh, Lash just about to get there with the Mephed Imperial Armory which is, an, it's just a great landmark by the way it gives you free siege engines it's so so strong mangonels will be popping out soon from that but certainly in this point in the game for Vortex and Lash when he gets to the castle age, you'll be thinking about relics, uh, but also securing the middle of the map, right? Because the gold at this point is going to be running out. Let's just see how much gold is in that vein. About just over half, but that will be chewed up very quickly with the number of night production coming out. And the guild hall is still set to food, and here's the monastery for the French. But certainly I think at this point, really, 
uh, thinking about relics and also positioning of a keep, getting like a good landmark a, a area just to protect. The thing is that neither player, well actually I take the back, Vortex does have nine villages on stone, so it looks like he's going to get a keep of his own uh, and try and maybe get some map control. A couple of knights here on the east side. Have been walled out though. But yeah, fascinating game so far. And I'll just take this opportunity to say that, guys, if you've been enjoying the content on the channel, make sure you leave a like on the video. But more importantly, if you haven't subscribed to the channel just yet, I'm hoping to have a subscriber goal, maybe about 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. It's a bit ambitious, but I'd love to get there. So if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel and you enjoy the content, more importantly, make sure you subscribe. More importantly, hit that notification bell so you get a notification when I do go and post another video. And Janissaries, as you saw, just popped out from the town center using that Vizier point. That'd be really strong against the Knights. And I think this is why the Ottomans are often considered a very strong counterpick to the French because of the Janissaries. Just so strong at taking down enemy cavalry. See the spy being upgraded to veterancy. Chivalry coming in for the French Royal Knights. Now the uh, village count really starting to escalate for Vortex. 20 villager lead. But take a look at this. It looks like Lash is considering a keep of his own. He's got eight villagers on stone. But let's just take a look at the income per minute. It's actually looking very strong here for Lash in terms of uh, food and gold alike. Now he's actually getting a lot of military presence. 49, obviously, because he's getting free units from the uh, the military score. It's just not to be underestimated. He's got a lot of map control. Now let's take a look how much gold is in the vein here for, for Vortex. I think this is, a, this is a really interesting part of this map, regions, right? There aren't that many maps that are like this, where you have a lot of the resources in the mid map. You have to have control, because if you don't, then you have no gold and then you have no premium units. Like the Castle Age is very much about gold heavy units, like your mana arms, your knights, um, you know, the crossbows. You want, you need gold. You just need gold in the Castle Age. And the trouble for Vortex, he might be starved out of it very soon because a lot of this army is knocking on the door of the French. He's going to break in. It might need to back off. He doesn't really need to take a fight necessarily here, Lash. Although he might feel like he's compelled to because of the, the villager difference. The Sabahi run in, they may need to run back out there because a lot of units are uh, Lash. Yeah, it does back off now, which is certainly the right call. But he needs to hold on to this middle position. Now, Vortex might actually get a keep up of his own. And if he can get a... I mean, the thing is, he doesn't have the position to get a keep here, right? It'll be suicide to send villagers there. So I think Lash has got a really good read on the game, right? Because you might be tempted to think, oh, you've got a lot of military. Let's just get to the Imperial Age, maybe, and upgrade. But the fact that his army is in this position is so important. It stops Vortex from getting a keep in that strategic area to protect the gold. Sends a couple of lances on the west side just to hunt those guys down. And, I mean, it's kind of like almost Vortex is going to be forced into getting a keep here back at home with the production buildings and to uh, take advantage of that. Because obviously the French keeps, they actually um, have a really good bonus on them. It actually reduces the cost of units from the archery rangers and the stables. And so it's going to do that right now. The knights are going to ride in from the French. And he's going to try and do some counter raid if he can. But we'll see if he manages to. And on the west side, he does pick apart all of those French Royal Knights with the Lancers. And he's going to run away now with those... The army there. Just stationed and camped there for Lash. Okay, the villagers are coming forward for that keep. Going to get the keep drop here, and that's so strong. And I think because of this Vortex, it has been forced to get the keep here. And whilst it does give him cheaper units... Trouble is, if he doesn't have any gold, he can't produce any units. And he has run out of gold now. That's a concern. And if, if Lash gets a keep here in the middle, which he will, there's a Manganel as well. That's going to certainly help the fight. Monk coming out. Now, Vortex does have one of the relics. But he can't rely on just one relic to get the gold income he needs. Alright, well, that keep should go up in the middle of the map and give him a lot of control. Well, the question is now, where does Vortex go from here? The lack of gold is going to hurt him a lot. The units there, a lot of the French Royal Knights just trying to ride by, but the Janissary pick a couple off on the retreat, and, well, he definitely wouldn't have wanted that. But it is what it is. His party should chase that down. It's a good position, because the keep is up now. He's well protected. Might even get a, a French Royal Knight there because of that. And he's got the gold control he needs. He's got everything he needs here, Ottomans. He's got the Mangonel, he's got free units, he's got the uh, Mehmed Imperial Armory as well, working on Springords. It's a nice, nice choice of units. But uh, the French do have more villages. The trouble is, at this point, does that help? He has switched his Guildhall onto gold. Kind of forced to do that, really, at this point. 
But I think at this point, he needs to do something about this Vortex. He needs something fast. The trouble is he can't actually afford Siege to get rid of the keep. He just hasn't got any gold. Question, does he have a market? Can he actually buy or sell resources to get the gold he needs? On the east side, the knight going to be taking out the spearman if he can. Right, well, he's going to take care of that little knight there on the west side. Oh, villagers there trying to get... I don't know where they were going to. Maybe to food. Oh, that's bad. He tried to get an outpost to be defensive, but there's just too many villagers to fit inside, right? Has to back off now. We'll lose some more villagers. That's not ideal. Would, would last, will he pounce on that? Looks like he will pounce on that. There's five villagers in the outpost. He might just surround them and take them out. But surely now, it's looking dicey for a Vortex. The lack of gold hurting. But could he have a couple of tricks up his sleeves? We'll have to see. Might have to rely on trash units. Maybe archers and, and spearmen. Yeah, this is th these five villagers are gone, I'm afraid. It's unfortunate, but the whole Ottoman army do converge on that position. Two mangonels. And, uh, oh, there's a keep going up by Vortex, but he does lose a couple of villagers trying to get that up, and that's going to be a problem. He lost those five villagers in the outpost. Villagers trying to build up the keep for the French. I'm not sure. I, I mean, the army's not really in position, but there are two mangonels. The Ottomans, they need to get across the map. Lash needs to get there now and deny the keep if he can. Mangonels gets a good couple of shots off there with the boulders. But if he loses that keep or doesn't get the keep up, that's a problem. Horse, we're going to dive on the mangonels. Three of them. I'm not sure if they get that mangonel or not. But if they do, at least it's a good picking off. Oh, villagers come into repair, but not quick enough. The mangonel, one more still survives. But the mangonel shots getting on the uh, infantry for the French. Here, yeah, the villagers go down. The keep doesn't go up. The janitor is firing off. And Vortex has no access to gold. He doesn't have that keep up. Villagers committing. But are they going to get absolutely mowed down? There's no way that the villagers get that keep up. Mangadal firing off on the back line. Sipai on the front line. And Vortex taps out. He couldn't get the keep. He couldn't get the position. He couldn't get the gold. 